I'm in my new machine. There's another method to provide credentials to the PowerShell or command line using Secure Token Service or STS. You can provide temporary credentials that is valid for a short while so that you are not running into the risk of having long-term secret key and access keys. So I'm in my development machine. If I open uh, PowerShell and then uh, type uh, get S3 bucket, uh, it's going to give me the list of buckets. And the permission for that one came from the instance profile. So if I go into my uh, EC2 instance, which is I'm running it due machine, and if I select the IAM role DevOps due machine and then open it new tab, the permission for that came through this Amazon S3 full access. So for the moment, let's remove this to make sure that this instance doesn't have uh, Amazon S3 full access. And I'm going into uh, the PowerShell again and then type get S3 bucket. So now you don't have access. So let's set up the environment in a way that I take the credentials when I want it using secure token service. So let's first create a user to uh, do this lab. The, if you go into the IAM section of your AWS console, let's create a user uh, let's say like before my test user for the programmatic access, next permission. But here I'm not giving any permission for this user. So let's click add, next review, create the user. So I create the user and I got the access key ID and the secret key. So let's save this in my uh, not bad here, maybe. So this is my access key and the secret key is this. So if I try to provide this access key and the secret key, of course, it's going to throw an error. So let's say, for example, get uh, S3 bucket. And then if I provide access key uh, with this access key and the secret key as the secret key. It will of course give an error because uh, this user does not have S3 uh, access. That's fine. So what I'm going to do now is grant this user permission to assume a role in AWS. So how can we do that? So if you go into your uh, IAM section, so let's close this. If you go into your IAM uh, section of the screen, under roles, we can create a new role. So let's create a new role. Uh, in this case, let's call it, uh, it's the service that I'm going to trust is EC2. Of course, we are going to change it shortly to trust the user. And then I'm going to add permission. The permission I'm going to add is a manage permission, which is in this case S3 full access. Click next, click review, and let's call it my uh, test role. So this is the role that I define. So create the role. When you create the role, uh, you can find that uh, this role, my test role, trust EC2 uh, to assume itself. So let's go into this role and for the trust relationships, uh, instead of trusting the EC2, let's trust a user for this. So what I'm going to trust here is the principle is the service. Instead of service, let's trust um, a user. So how can we do that? So the user that I created, if you go into your IAM section, let's open it in a new tab. Uh, the user that I created is this user, my test user. 
the ARN is this one, Amazon resource name. So let's copy this ARN. And then uh, if I go into this uh, section where I edit the trust, instead of service, I'm going to trust AWS user, which is this user, the account ID. You can also trust not only the user of this account, you can trust a user of another customer's account or another one of your partner's account. So in this case, I'm going to trust this user and update the trust policy. So this user now can assume this role. And this role has the permission of S3 full access. So let's see how we can use this special uh, uh, wiring to assume the role from that user and then provide access to S3. Because I don't want to provide the credentials again and again uh, with, for the user, let's set the uh, AWS credentials uh, for this session. Access key is this one. And the secret key is this one. So I set the session access key and secret key. So if I type uh, get S3 bucket, still it's not going to work, S3 buckets. Still it's going to give access denied because this access key and secret key does not have access to uh, execute this S3 buckets because we did not attach any permissions for the user. But instead of that, what we can do is we can uh, use STS get credentials. And for example, you can say, use STS role, role ARN is the name of the role ARN. So I got this role ARN from the role that I created. So if you go into uh, your IAM section, and if you go into your roles, the role we just created is called my test role. The role ARN is this. So this is the role that I'm going to assume. So I copied it. And that role has Amazon S3 full access. And it trusts this user to assume that role. So I copied this uh, role ARN. Uh, so if you go into the roles, uh, this is the role I created. So this is the role ARN. And that's the role ARN I have provided here as uh, the ARN of the role. So I say use STS role and I take the credentials of that. So you can find I give it the role session name as uh, some kind of a name and then I give the credentials. So I get the credentials now. Now these credentials that I got from this PowerShell object has an access key and also it has a secret key. This access key and this secret key came through the assume role. And in, interestingly, that has the permission to access the S3 bucket. For example, if I take get S3 bucket, and if I type it like this, it's going to, uh, of course, give an error. But if I type get S3 bucket, but then provide the credentials that I got through assume permission or STS uh, role, which is in the cred uh, object, you can find that it will successfully get the uh, access to S3. Now this credential object is very interesting. So example, so what we type here was, this is the command we type. Use STS uh, role and we got the credentials. And if you look at the credentials, access key is this one. And then the secret key is this one. If I type it again, then this access key is, uh, is different. So what you get is some uh, temporary credentials. You can find that that's the key and the uh, secret key. You can find that the access key and the secret key it got are actually different because it's actually a temporary uh, credentials that you are getting. 
you can find the expiration time of this credential. So these credentials will expire uh, because it's a temporary one on this time. If you look at the documentation for use STS role, one of the parameter is duration in seconds. So let's try to give that duration in second. So in this case, uh, I'm going to say, uh, clear the screen. Uh, for use STS role, role AR, and this is the role that I'm going to assume. I give a role session name like my session name. But in this case, I'm going to give duration in second. So let's give 30 seconds as a duration. All right, and then type enter. So must have a value greater than or equal to 900. So the minimum time that it can have is 900. So let's give about 900 seconds. So that's good. And then I use uh, get S3 bucket. And uh, for the credentials, I'm going to provide the credentials I uh, got here. So now I can access this uh, get S3 bucket with these credentials until this expiration happens, 900 seconds. That's about um, 15 minutes. So you can have these credentials for 15 minutes. Uh, so if you try to use these uh, uh, credentials after 15 minutes, it will be already expired and you will not get access. So that's a much better secure way to access the services than having a fixed access key and secret keys. About 15 minutes has already passed. So let's try to use the same uh, access key the cred object to access S3 bucket. Um, credentials, I'm going to pass the credentials. Let's see what will happen. So you can find that the provided token has expired because uh, I spent about 900 seconds after this command and the token has already expired. So I need to renew the token to access uh, this service again. So I can of course uh, type uh, cred get the new uh, credentials again and then type get S3 bucket uh, with the credentials, uh, the cred which I have refreshed. So now you can access again. Where this become handy is when you have multiple environments. Imagine that you have three environments called production environment, pre-production environment and development environment. What you can do here is you can define a three different roles instead of three different users or three different EC2 instance or three, dif uh, three different EC2 instance profile. You can define role one, two, three. Uh, for example, role one will provide just enough permission to deploy into production and role three will provide just enough permission to deploy into development environment. What you can then do is uh, define a principle uh, and then let these roles trust that principle. So the principle can be a user, EC2 instance, uh, maybe an AWS service. It can even be a AWS account that one of your uh, partner or customer owns. So this user uh, or the principle does not necessarily need to be uh, something that you own in your account. It could be uh, another AWS account, another user from your partner or another customer account. So once these roles trust this principle, uh, the principle can assume the role. For example, if it is going to deploy into production environment, it can assume the production environment role one and then make the necessary modification to the production environment. When it wants to deploy into pre-production, it will assume the pre-production role and then deploy into pre-production environment. Same for the deployment. Uh, if you want to uh, deploy uh, something or make modification to the development environment, you assume that role and then push those changes into the development environment. So in this way, uh, you can have a single principle and multiple roles corresponding to different environment and then switch between the roles 
to assume the certain permissions that is just enough to make modification to that environment. It's more secure and less error prone. 